repeat that, what's happening this weekend, but this special special date? September 14th is my father's, would have been his 100th birthday, so it's a centennial year. And as, as you heard, which is part of kind of a fun thing, the 100th anniversary, 200th, well, 100th anniversary for Dad, that would be the 200th anniversary of the writing of the Star Spangled Banner, so. And there's another, uh, another anniversary that I discovered. Your father began as the Lone Ranger on television on September 15th. 1949 so Monday would be the 65th anniversary of your father first being the Lone Ranger so so I guess he started the Lone Ranger a day after he turned 35 correct one day after he turned 35 and he did not own a television <laughs> <laughs> he had to go next door to watch it <laughs> uh, now uh, we saw a lot about your your father's background up there uh, but I guess a lot of people and this came as a surprise to me when I was uh, reading the autobiography and, 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 uh, and doing some research here. Your father was an incredible athlete. A lot of people didn't know that. I think the terrific photographs of him on the trapeze, I don't know if, you, if, if it was up there long enough to notice, but perfect point to his feet, the perfect point to his hands. Mm -hmm. he, he practiced throughout his, his uh, childhood in Canada. His family went up to Canada and uh, he would be Swinging from the trees, literally practicing. So he was he was quite an athlete. And he was born in Chicago, and um, I guess he actually even performed at the Chicago World's Fair, correct? Yeah. So uh, very talented, talented uh, athlete who became a very talented well model and then a stunt man, and uh, and now is in the stunt stunt person's Hall of Fame, which is which is really remarkable. Uh, so I know this is probably we saw a lot about. Clayton Moore, the icon, but this is probably the question that you've been asked a million times in your life. You probably hate the question. What was it like growing up as the Lone Ranger's daughter? You know, I it, it was Dad. It, it, I I watched the Mickey Mouse Club. I didn't I didn't watch the Lone Ranger, so I, <laughs> there was no connection there for me. I think the um, the, the first time that. I got any inkling that he was well known, we were shopping for a television or something. I must have been seven or eight years old, and we were out, and of course, you know, don't, don't forget, my father uh, portrayed a character that was in a costume and a mask that covered his face, so I was able to pretty much live a normal life, and he could go out and not be recognized until he spoke. Mm -hmm. And people would recognize his voice, and that, that was probably the first time I had a sense that, uh, why does she know who you are? <laughs> now, uh, your father was, was the, the Lone Ranger, as we saw. He was many other roles, usually in Republic serials before that. But uh, once he became the Lone Ranger, he became the Lone Ranger in a sense. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But... Um, when you look at, compared to the actors, the actors today have it soft. He was doing 52 episodes a year. I could not believe that when I read that. So he was doing episode a week. But the thing that was really amazing to me is, and I think a lot of people have forgotten this, he actually got fired at one time from being the Lone Ranger. Did he ever talk about that? He did, and they, they did work really hard. And thank you for bringing that up, because the bottom line was is it was a new medium. And it was done on the cheap. It was a special. It, it, essentially, it was it was an extension of the Republic Studios cliffhangers. The faster you could turn them out, the cheaper you could turn them out, the better. They didn't have they didn't have a clue yet of how much money television was going to bring in. Um, and after the first year, well, if I may back up for a moment, the Lone Ranger character George Trendle, who created the character along with Fran Stryker, created also uh, the Green Hornet. Both those characters have a mask. He's a smart guy. The idea was, well, let's turn out some characters for kids to listen to. This was on the radio, of course. Mm -hmm. um, that the merchandising could just be any actor, any model behind this, this mask. So when the television series came on, Dad got the role. And after the first year and a half, first season, uh, indeed, he was fired. And that isn't quite the story that's out there, but 
you you ferreted the information. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just misspoke here. But yeah. <laughs> no, but it's true. Um, and it was interesting that he was only gone for, for one season uh, because clearly the, the the kids did know that it wasn't the same person behind the mask. It wasn't the Lone Ranger. It wasn't the Lone Ranger, that's right. <laughs> and then it happened again. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But uh, but so he, he's off the show for a bit. He, he uh, comes back and, and finishes the show, I believe, in around 1957. A few years later, you come along, so you were never... Clayton Moore's daughter when when he was on television as the Lone Ranger, but you were of course around as when he was doing his personal personal appearances. Oops. Did you did you ever go along on any of these personal appearances? I did, and I was a complete disaster at it. <laughs> because I, I I didn't know I was supposed to be paying attention and dad didn't really prompt me and and I I, I didn't it wasn't I don't know. I don't think I cared <laughs> as a kid. I just, it wasn't my thing. Now, was there ever any confusion on the part of his fans that the Lone Ranger had a family? Well, okay, and that's, therein lies, by the way, why I didn't go for the most part. Dad was very, very clear, and I think this, this speaks volumes to why he was so associated with the character for over 50 years. He made certain that every interview he gave, he told the interviewer up front, we are only going to talk about the Lone Ranger. Do not ask about my wife, my family, my children, my home, where I live. We, you can only ask me Lone Ranger for questions, and that's it. How did that work in your <laughs> life? <though>? Did, uh, <clears throat> did you have friends at school that would watch or do the show and would want to come and meet your dad, the Lone Ranger? Did that kind of thing happen? Oh, I suppose, but I assume they wanted to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your dad's just a bonus on that, yeah. Did that ever happen, though? Did, did do you have, I mean, were, were you known at school, say, as Clayton Moore's daughter? Sure, at some, you know, but, you know, at that age, you're, you're in kindergarten, you're getting, you're, you're teased. It's not, it's not, they didn't think it was great, I got teased about it. So it wasn't fun. <laughs> that part of it wasn't fun. So, um, now we know Clayton Moore, the icon, but if you had to describe your father, what, what was, I know that's a hard thing to, to sum up, but try your best to tell us, what was dad like? You know, just as a guy, you know? Actually, that's a really great question. He was a man's man. He was a guy. I mean, he was out planting palm trees and digging ditches and building stuff and fixing the car. In fact, one time he, we, my mother came in and said, get your clothes on, we got to go to the hospital. <laughs> Dad had gotten his finger caught in something underneath the hood of the, of the car and off we went and the, the part of his finger never grew back actually. Um, he was a man's man. He was a guy. And it, and it, but he had an incredible sense of humor and this is something that's really fun for me as a daughter and it's, it's fun for me to share that he was a kid. He was a big kid. He'd be the first one out in the pool. He'd be the first one playing tennis. He was brilliant. I was bad. He'd stand in one place. He had me running from one side of the court <laughs> to the other. But he, he was obviously a great athlete um, and, a, and a lot of fun as a dad because he was a pal. So of course all the neighborhood kids wanted to come over and, and play because he was a kid. Big kid. So his sense of humor, I, I think that's probably something that uh, is not really thought of as a, as a characteristic of the Lone Ranger. Is there anything else that would kind of surprise us about about your father that was kind of different than the, than the character? Well, he was a Virgo. I don't know what the character was. <laughs> <laughs> what, what that meant to us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what that meant to us at home is, uh, oh my God, this is great. I haven't thought about this in a long time. Because in the summer, Dad would go on a tour, so he'd be gone for two and three and four months at a time, which of course I thought was normal. I didn't know other people's fathers didn't do that. And my mother one time said, I'm going to move this chair one inch, and you watch what your father does when he walks in the door. <laughs> Seriously, did not put his luggage down until he put, and uh, you know, there's a little spot in the carpet, right, when you move, when you move something. Yeah. He moved the chair back before he put the carpet down. 
So I, okay. I don't know, is that a Lone Ranger trait? I, I don't doubt that. What do you guys think? I don't know. I never saw it in the episodes. Um, now, one thing that was really interesting to me in the autobiography was uh, your father, as you said, was basically associated with the Lone Ranger character for the rest of his life. Um, he mentions that the Lone Ranger, playing the Lone Ranger, actually made him a better man. What do you think he meant by that? He really took the Lone Ranger creed to heart. It really is an extraordinary piece of writing. It, uh, it was originally written by Franz Stryker in 1933. It was a template for the writers of the radio show. Basically as in, what would the Lone Ranger do in X, Y, and Z situations? So the creed was a template for the writers. But it is a, a beautiful piece of writing, um, and it's its tenets are, it's, 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 it's far more profound than respect your parents and look both ways before you cross the street and the kinds of cowboy codes that else, else were out there at that time. And if you, if you listen to the tenets it, and you really think to yourself, you know, I, if I were to try and absorb these and, and follow them, it would make you a better person. And he, he felt that, and he saw it by, by portraying this character. And when he would go to children's hospitals and, and do rodeos, and, and he would get the feedback and the, and the love from these kids, he saw that, that indeed he had an opportunity. Um, and he enjoyed being able to, to offer that, that morality. Uh, one thing I think is, is really remarkable about your father, um, I don't know what that was, but... Uh, he seemed to really, maybe more so than, than current, and we talked about this on the phone the other night, uh, he, he seemed to really respect his audience. And he understood that his audience, a lot of them were under 10, you know, to be honest. And so um, I remember, now you weren't, uh, uh, you weren't around when, uh, when he was actually on television as the Lone Ranger, but you were obviously around, because uh, it happened in the 70s, when, uh, when he was stripped of the mask. What do you remember from that time? He was hurt. He was hurt. I think it was more, you know, his, his take on that was, obviously he'd been making his living that way, so needless to say, there was, a, there was an income issue, let's be honest. But on a, on a bigger platform, he had been portraying this character at that point for 25 years, yeah. longer. Mm -hmm. So the way it all uh, transpired was something that, that was disturbing for him because, frankly, he had a great idea, and it's too bad they didn't actually play it out. And this is, this is an interesting thing. In 1979, when Jack Rather, who owned the character at the time, decided to create the new film, uh, Legend of the Lone Ranger, with Clinton Spilsbury and Michael Horse, um, is when he asked Dad to stop doing any more personal appearances, stop performing as the Lone Ranger. And obviously, let's face it, the idea is you're redoing the character. The movie, the, the character is a young man. I mean, the Lone Ranger is a young man. So Dad got that. He wanted to be able to hand the mask to the next generation. His idea was to have a scene at the beginning of the film where he's shot from behind, so you still don't reveal the identity of the Lone Ranger, and he would untie the mask and hand it to the next generation. And that little moment, that little transition would have made it, first of all, it's kind of a great storyline, sure. right? But besides that, it was a nod and to, to his portrayal and the fans would have bought into that, right. but they didn't do it, so it was a gigantic PR disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a huge PR disaster. Eventually he was able to put the mask back on. Is that the mask that we have here today? Is that one of them? That is the mask. <laughs> so be sure and take a, take a, a, a good look. It's, it's, it's never out. It's probably the last time it's going to be out. And, and uh, it's going on auction. Uh, soon, right? It is. Profiles in History um, is taking care of the, of the auction, and um, it will be October 17th. Okay. Um, bless you. Uh, now, I remember 
and this might just be some jumbled memories from decades just <coughs> bounced together here, but I remember around the time when uh, he was forced to take off the mask that some people seemed to misunderstand what was happening and they thought that your father actually thought he was the Lone Ranger. I remember there was some talk about that, but you're saying that wasn't, that wasn't true in, in any way. How would you say that the Lone Ranger and your father actually differed? You don't, you're not, um, you don't have jumbled memories. It was actually on the front page of the calendar section. <laughs> a picture of the Lone Ranger and a picture of a duplicate picture, like the exact same, but one said Lone Ranger and one said Clayton Moore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even at the time, he laughed. Mm -hmm. He laughed, he thought it was funny. He said, yeah, well. No bad publicity. Let them talk. Spell my name right on the check. <laughs> so, but, but, but I'm sorry. I wow. I lost the question. <laughs> but well, what? In what ways? Now we know that your dad really tried to portray. The, what the, ways are they different? What ways are they different? Yes. You know, Dad liked to have a good time. You saw him. You saw him there with Lupe Velez. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was just escorting her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was, you know, both my parents were, were Hollywood children of the golden era. My mother had been engaged to John Barrymore, uh, was at Errol Flynn's house and written up by Loyola Parsons, and, and she was far more, the, the, probably the Paris Hilton of her day, and my father was no one at that time. So they both, they were, they had a good time. I think he probably had a better time than the Lone Ranger ever had. <laughs> now, um, I never, uh, I never met your father, uh, but I, I remember I was, I remember he passed away. It was right around Y two K, if I recall, because I remember I went to the uh, memorial service, which was at um, G, uh, the Audrey Museum, and I remember looking at the date because I believe it was like. He passed away like December 28th or something, and I was thinking, what a shame that he didn't live to the year 2000, you know, just a couple days yeah. more. But we talked about this, and you said he didn't feel that way. First of all, Dad had an incredible life. He had a very full life. He was very, he he always said how happy he was and fulfilled he was, and he'd had many incredible experiences. And he was kind of a, a simple guy. I mean, he the whole Y2K thing, I think he was a, a cowboy. I don't want anything to do with the future. I mean, this is, um, I'm putting words in his mouth. He never said anything like that. But um, I handled his business, and uh, toward the end of his life, uh, I was driving long distances to get him to sign things and paperwork. And I said, Dad, we need to put a fax machine in the house. This is crazy. I'm, I'm working, and I'm driving back and forth to the house. And he says, I don't want a fax machine. Well, but I want a fax machine, and I'm the one doing all the driving. Well, I know what that thing is. It's like a dictaphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so we didn't get the fax machine, but so the, <laughs> the, point, the point being... He really, you know, he, he loved his life as it was, and it was simple, and it was easy, and I think that, you know, 80, he was 85 when he died, and I think that the, he didn't need to be in the next millennium. Um, now, I live in Newhall, a uh, half hour north here, 45 minutes north here, where we have the um, Walk of Western Stars, so we have Clayton Moore's, not star, but saddle in the street. <coughs> Uh, we saw up there on the video, and by the way, thank you to, is it Bob Herndon? Ben Herndon. Oh, 